So, uh, very excited to be here again, uh, as you know. So, uh, as you see in the program, I work for ReliQuest. Uh, I have a new title. Uh, my new title is Principal Research Scientist uh, at ReliQuest. And so I get to do R&D all the time. So I, I do a lot of coding too, and I build new products and I try to get those products commercialized. So every time there's like a hot new technology, they ask me to look at it. Uh, we have a small little team of five people. So we look at all new hot technology and see how we can uh, do cybersecurity related stuff with it. Uh, so I'm really excited about this presentation because last year I did a blockchain demo where I showed how to hack, chain, hack blockchain well received. This year, I'm going to do uh, some AI. Uh, I got like, I got probably about six demos in, for AI. So hopefully I can paste this right uh, at, the, at the end. If I, if I have about 15 minutes, I can do some badass demos. I think, I think y'all gonna like them. So, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of the crazy dude. I always like to do live demos. So I, so I, I tempt the demo gods <laughs> if, I can, if I can get my live demos going. All right, so uh, this, this is inspired, of course, uh, by a lot of things that I've been going uh, as far as technology goes. I've always been a fan of AI. I'm gonna talk about what got me into AI in a second ago. I mean, I've been, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm close to 50 now. Uh, they say uh, I don't look like I'm 50. They say black don't crack. So, um, so I'm looking pretty good for 50. Um, but ever since I was young, I, I was fascinated with AI, and, and I'll show you some of the movies and some of the nostalgia that got me into AI. So this book right here by Jeff Hawkins, how many people have read this book? No, nobody? I don't see one person, am I correct? This right here is the best book I've ever read on AI. However, this book came out before LLM started to pop off. This book is still a must read if you want to go in AI. So what I do every year here is I say, Here's, what the, here's the technology, and here's how I think we could use it for cybersecurity. And so there's going to be offensive and def defensive implications here. So the large language models have totally flipped the game when it comes to, uh, to AI. This book is, is written by Jeff Hawkins. Jeff Hawkins is a big deal because he actually invented the Palm Pilot, and he, he has a degree in computer science and neuroscience, which is pretty badass. So he understands how computers work, and he understands how the brain works. And so he's, he's been fascinated with AI, so he wrote this book about it. In this book, he totally crapped on AI. He totally decimated AI at the time of the writing of the book. And he still, in some of the many of the points that he, he, he emphasized in that book, it is true. And so we hear this term, uh, and even if you go to OpenAI's website, they talk about AGI, uh, which, uh, is is what is, is general AI? What is it? What is it? Kylie, artificial general intelligence (AGI). So that's what they're going for, and we've been going for that since the '60s or something, it's like it, or maybe past that. This book right here gives you a history of all the AI and how there has been several AI waves, and this one is just the latest. There was like AI waves in the '60s, '70s, '80s, '90s, 2000, and you know a lot of security products have talked about AI. And there's been waves in AI and cybersecurity too. But this book right here does a really good job on talking about this. And the big point, and, I, and this, is, this is kind of a spoiler alert, but you should read the book anyway because it gives you a really detailed history. But what he talks about in the book, he doesn't believe in AGI. He doesn't believe AGI would be, be ever attainable. I, I kind of, you know, he might, he might be right. But he does believe, he says we should not make, in this book, we, we shouldn't be concerned with making AGI. We should be in, being concerned with making intelligent machines. So intelligent machines are specific use cases where a Roomba, that's a specific thing. It uses, it uses some kind of AI to, to vacuum. And I think in cybersecurity, at the end of the day, we're gonna see a lot of solutions that, are, that have a specific use course, but I think uh, the and, eight, and the reason why OpenAI and Microsoft has invested like 30 billion into them or something crazy like that is because their, their goal is um, to, uh, to bring AGI to life. AGI means like, you know, I, I guess it would be like singularity. I can't, that's kind of, like, kind of like married, people talk about singularity. Best book on AI I've read in my life. I read this book probably about 10 years ago. 
and it's it's totally valid still. I've been fascinated with how my brain works. That's why, because uh, you know, I'm I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, but I grew up super poor. Uh, but I, I you know ended up being a gifted and talented. Ended up doing working at NSA because I had high ASVAB scores in the military. So I've been really blessed, uh, and I've been really blessed and being being able. I'm pretty smart, and I was like, how do how does my brain learn? How how, how did I learn this stuff? And so I've been totally fascinated with that. So that's why I love neuroscience and I love AI. <clears throat> so this this right here, this is actually pretty interesting to me. It's interesting for a lot of different reasons. I'll go into it. Okay. This is a very profound statement. And the reason why it's so profound to me is because it's absolutely true. Funny enough, you know, and in case you didn't recognize, I'm black, right? The, th the funny thing about that is, like, I look at how uh, the... Our, our black American culture has been transported all across the world. And even like in Africa, there was like 50 Cent and Tupac gangs. So they would see these artists, you know, that are imitating some kind of life. And then people imitate that stuff on, in a whole different way. Also, it kind of goes to how AI is trained. And a lot of people say, how's this data? And what's this training data? So it's only going to go off what it sees as far as like people have putting it down in, into writing. So I love this quote. I actually have my own quote. I thought I was so profound, but I didn't realize this guy said something like this first. Here's my quote. I think life imitates art and art imitates life. It, it, goes, it goes both ways. I think it's like very cyclical. And I actually, uh, I'd be, me and my wife go on these long morning walks and I, I'd be pontificating and she listens to me. Yeah, she's, she's golden. <laughs> I can't believe somebody would listen to me for going on 30 years. But she bears with me. But this is the deal. So art imitates life. So I think that, that what AI can do is it can imitate us, right? And it, it's imitating on basically what stuff is published and what it's trained on. I don't know how much it's going to... So the AGI piece would it'd be able to create stuff uh, that, that's on a whole different level. So it's all... A lot of this stuff is a lot of philosophy. And I got another really good book that I'm going to recommend later to check out the philosophy of AI. All right. So, is cybersecurity an art or a science? There's actually a conference that I, I remember in Austin. It was named Art and Sciences or whatever, right? So, if I'm going I'm to do a hand raise here, who thinks cybersecurity is an art? Raise your hand. A couple of people. And how many people think it's a science? Okay, cool. So, this is hilarious, right? Because I use OpenAI, and I asked OpenAI what, what this was. And this is the bullet points that OpenAI gave me, right? It says cybersecurity is a science, theoretical foundations. There's stuff like uh, cryptography and things that are like really math and sciences stuff. Totally believe that. Empirical research, there's peer reviewed papers, all kind of academia. And even like one of the things we do here when we present to people, this is, this is science. We're, we're, we're doing our research and we're presenting it to our peers and we can get feedback. You know, some of y'all can say Marcus sucked or whatever, but this is this is what we're this is what we're here for. This is the research, and this is how we how we do do our business. All right, um, there's technical measures like firewalls and all these different things. That's definitely science because there's there's certain things like packets and and blocking a packet based on a sin, an act, or whatever. All that technical jargon. And reproducibility, like we can't do the whole it worked in my desk thing in cybersecurity. Like, I know y'all have all played with something, and like, man, this actually worked. It's going to block every attack. It worked great in the lab. But if it's not re reproducible, that's not science. And this is what OpenAI says about as an art. Creativity on attack and defense. Totally agree. I think that humans at this point, we have a leg up on some, some kind of things and connecting the dots. We have our own neural network, and sometimes we can connect the dots really good, right? Uh, also, uh, intuition and experience. Sometimes we have a gut feeling, and sometimes, uh, funny enough, I've watched a lot of different, I, you know, everybody watched a lot of different shows. You ever watch anything that, where they're like, uh, get, your gut feeling is something that we kind of ignore too much? Y'all probably know that. <laughs> so we have these strong intuitions sometimes, and that intuition is right. So at the end of the day, we're still animals. And this is, like, that book on intelligence talks about, it talks about the brain so good, it's, it blows my mind. And it talks about how we're how how our brains evolved and whatever, right? And we still have a lizard brain or a crocodile, uh, alligator brain or whatever. We still have all that that stuff in our brain. Um, 
we can do tailored solutions. But some of this stuff, this is the one where I think that AI can totally do this. If I told AI everything about your network and all that stuff, it would definitely be able to come up with a tailored solution. I'm, I think AI can do that. And are you calling a BS on that? Uh, or was that just a cough? Uh, <laughs> all right, just checking. All right, also on the social engineering side, uh, social engineering, as you probably know, and you probably, like, people are already using uh, AI to generate, uh, everybody's using AI to generate emails, by the way, even marketing companies and all that stuff. And that's why I actually laugh if people say, oh, we're going to build this, we're going we're gonna to create AI rules, we're going to create rules to detect when an email is AI. I was like, bro, everybody's using a email, I mean, everybody's using AI for email now. All the marketers, all the copy, all the bloggers, everybody's using AI to, to write content. So... But from a social engineering standpoint, absolutely, it's great for social engineering. Uh, and, and, but I think that uh, and the thing you're going to see, like the intelligent machine piece is like we're working side by side with AI. That's what I propose. We work side by side with it. Don't be scared of it. And especially the good guys. I always tell the good guys, when technology come back, come out, usually the good guys, and I consider myself, everybody in this room is a good guy, unless there's somebody undercover here. Um, but what, what we always do is we like, oh, no, bad technology. I don't want to see it. We shouldn't do this on our network. And that's kind of like a knee-jerk uh, knee reaction from a lot of cybersecurity people. But from a business perspective, we all know the business is going to get what they're going to get, just like cloud back in the day. So this, this tripped me out. My first memory of, of me crying at a movie was a, this movie right here. And I asked this back in February of, of this year. This is when, you know, OpenAI started popping, right? So I don't, this is kind of, this is kind of, at the top, I know it's hard to read, but I'm going to say, there was this movie that I saw when I was a kid, like in the 80s, and a person was living in outer space with a robot, and they were uh, tending a garden. What's the name of that movie? This is me asking, because this, one of my earliest memories is me crying at this movie. I can remember it vividly. You know how when someone was emotional when you're young? I cried at this movie because I was like so fascinated with robots, and I must have been like three or four. I'm telling you, I was super young. But I always wanted to know what that movie was. And it says, based on the description, the name of the movie is Silent Running. So I got to rewatch that movie uh, this year. And I've been thinking about that movie, and I asked other people, hey, do you know what that movie is? Nobody could tell me what this movie was. But freaking open AI. <laughs> and when I saw this, I was sold. Funny thing about this movie is that it was a robots, and they were they were artificial intelligence, uh, living on this thing. Has anybody saw this movie except for me? We got two, two maybe two or two or more. But yeah, this movie is an epic movie. And so what I did when I started, uh, anytime I started journey on researching, because I've been fascinated with AI forever, even when I was three, crying at this movie, right? So what's funny about that is that I I binge watch everything you could watch about AI. Every movie about AI, I binge watch. What's really good about these movies is they touch all the, all the points, all the debates. You can even look at Terminator and all this thing. You're going to see the debates and all the stuff that uh, open AI people talk about. I mean, not, I mean, I would say uh, machine learning experts and, and artificial guys, artificial intelligence. That stuff, we've been talking about this since we, it, was, it was like in the 70s, 60s. I'm telling you, as soon as age, uh, AI come out, there has been movies about it. And it's actually good to, to watch those movies to understand people's fears, right? Because there's a lot of fear based with AI. So this, this is funny because I'm just thinking right here. So this actually talk title, some of y'all probably know, this came from Superman, right? Right? This, was, this, is, the, uh, this is like the original OG Superman uh, TV show, right? I'm really dating myself. Some of you guys are like, God dang, this guy's old. Some of y'all youngsters. The point I'm making here with this is I do, I, I believe, and I talk about this all the time, I'm a big superhero fan, and uh, if y'all saw my office, y'all would trip out. It's just obscene. My, my office looks like the 40-year-old virgin's room. <laughs> I got so many action figures, <laughs> you would trip. I didn't see that movie till recently, funny enough, and I actually felt, I was actually kind of triggered. <laughs> I was like, dang. Uh, but when I talk about people, I tell people this all the time, definitely when I'm mentoring and, and talking to young people, I tell them, 
everybody has a superpower, right? Just like Superman was born with a superpower, right? You know what's funny about superpowers is most, most superheroes, it's just normal to them. Superman flying and all this stuff, we were like, it's a bird, it's a plane, we looking up. God dang, that dude's flying all over the place. That's regular to him. <laughs> so, and that's the same to each one of us in here. Sometimes you might not even know you have a superpower. But one of the things that I, I think is that while using your superpower and AI, it's going to be a, a formidable thing. You, you, it's going to give you superpowers. So I hope that you embrace it. By a show of hands, how many of you guys are actively using some kind of uh, AI like LLM right now? It's about half, by half. I encourage the rest of y'all to get on board as soon as possible. Hopefully, hopefully I can convince you. I can use my powers of persuasion here. This is the movie that, that sold it for me right here. And I know a lot, a lot of y'all can relate to me, especially people in my age category. I saw this movie. I was 100% sold. I want to work with computers. I want to talk to I want to talk to some kind of you know AI thing <laughs> and all that stuff, and I was absolutely sold. I wanted a computer, all that stuff. This movie sold me. Shall we play a game? Classic. Everybody, everybody. That, I don't know if it, it hit. It, it might hit different because I think that some the youngsters got so much technology now they just don't get it. But back then it was like, oh my God, this is crazy. De La Soul, me, myself, and I. Who, anybody remember this song? It's old school hip. It's old school hip hop. It's a really good song. You should revisit it. The reason why I bring this up too, and this is talking about your superpowers. This is one of the best videos ever. Sometimes I go back. When you're a kid, sometimes you don't get it. It don't hit the same. But when you're older, you can understand. So this video is really awesome. So they went to De La Soul was kind of an unconventional hip hop group. They weren't gangsters. They were kind of like happy, happy go lucky people, right? And what's funny about this is <laughs> in this video, in this video, they tried to teach them how to be real hip hop artists. <laughs> so, and what's funny about this, this movie is that the De La Soul guys were like, what the frick is going on around here? And I know that some of y'all might feel the same about, about a lot of stuff, but I think the whole, whole thing is getting to know yourself and being authentic and embracing your own superpowers. Don't, you don't have to be whoever, everybody else. Don't try to do what everybody else do. Stick in your lane, and I like to say, sometimes we need lane assist, like in a car, when you're like getting out of your lane, boom, you need a lane assist to get you back what you need to be doing. And that's what I'm saying. And what is your superpower, and then how can AI help you with that? Because the more you know about it, just like I asked, what movie was that? The more you know about anything that you do at work, AI is going to put that on steroids. Because it's going to have more context and more, more, more information than you, you know. So neural networks, neural networks is, is something that came from just the study of the brain. What they found is that you have folds in your brain and these neurons fire and they, they remember stuff and they do all these different things. And that's all that these, 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 this new AI is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, like a computer representation of that and mathematical representations of this. So, sorry, slides a little bit jumbled up. <clears throat> so large language models. Large language models is what everybody's using pretty much right now. This is the hottest thing since sliced bread. And what large language models do is they just p predict the next, the next word. They just predict in the next word, you know, you know C, dot, C spot run. If I see C spot and then run, you know that. If somebody says C spot, everybody's going to complete it in here because you've been trained on that data, right? So this is how I like to... I like to Talk, to, uh, talk about these things. Well, these large language models, they figure out, they put more, more information, more computing power, more RAM. They can, they can actually predict a lot of stuff. And, and sometimes they, they're pretty dang good at what they do. So this is what the whole LLM, that's the, that's the hottest thing right now. And the training algorithm is just like, how, how do they take the data and how do they do it? So anybody can, there's a ton of training models. I'm going to mention this thing called Kaggle later, uh, K-A-G-G-L-E. Everybody, anybody played around with that? A couple people, get up on, get up on Kaggle because it's going to train, it's going to teach you how to train models, right? Uh, there's, there's tons of free models. There's also, a, there's a couple of more resources I'm going to get. So this training algorithm is just what runs through the data and it, and it allows you to make predictions and it builds a model. Human feedback. 
human feedback is what's that absolutely changed the game uh, when it comes to AI nowadays. What human feedback means is that when, um, if you've ever used, uh, it's kind of like, almost like A-B split testing in a, in a certain way. Uh, but what happened with OpenAI, how they made this, this revolution, and AI, OpenAI has totally revolu uh, revolutionized the game. What they did is they had the computer spit out sentences and they had humans vote up or down. And then after a while, they created models to imitate the humans. So they had computers giving the feedback that a human would give. That's pretty fascinating. So if you scale that and you have human feedback over thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of iterations, you're going to get what we see today. And that's made the difference. Back in the day, they thought machines could do it all, but they, they realized that it takes humans and the machines working together to get good results. And that's, what, that's why this is so amazing right now. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't be anything without human feedback. So this is how I, I and even yourself, I think, and sometimes I, I, I talk about advice that I've learned too, because I'm getting, I'm getting old now, and I want to pass this on before I go. <laughs> so, so learn how you learn. This is the best thing I can tell you. So in, even in machine learning, th those scientists and stuff are learning what the best way to do it. I say the same thing for humans. It's never too late. Learn the best way you learn. I'm an auditory learner. I can listen to an audio book and learn all day. If you ask me to read a book, I'm not doing it, right? So you just have to learn how you learn. And that's where it comes into the, to training data. What's, so uh, tons and tons of training data. So OpenAI was trained on like everything that you could imagine. Uh, absolutely amazing. But the data has to be clean. So in our, in our, our normal day-to-day -day lives, you also want to have you want to be taking in the right information all the time. Sometimes it's hard to be disciplined, but I want to learn. I want to take in this information. So, so training data is super important. But what's funny about that is that what, what you can do with AI is you can take data that's not sanitized, not, not, uh, not cleaned up at all, and sometimes you're going to get amazing results. I'll show you that. And the model. The model is actually, at the end of the day, it's kind of like the code. It's kind of like the code that makes everything running. What's up, bro? <laughs> so... Um, the model gets, gets everything at the end of the day, makes everything work. Bias. This is something we all have. So, so a lot of times I hear, when I hear the scientists talk about this, and I'm, I'm no disrespect to anybody that's an ML guy or AI uh, person in here, um, they talk about bias all the time. And this is definitely important, uh, but every human in here is biased, for sure, right? You got, everybody got their own agenda, their own political thing, their own religion, all these different things. So everybody's biased, and it's okay to be biased. We just have to, my, my philosophy on earth right now is just don't be an asshole to everybody. <laughs> yeah, that's it, <laughs> like, like straight up. So we're going to have bias. We just, you got to just deal with it. Hallucinations is another big thing. I heard people talk about hallucinations so much. Oh, man, uh, it said such and such. I'm like, bro, I, if, I, if you have a conversation, conversation with any human, they're going to say something crazy. <laughs> and they're going to say something that's not true. <laughs> something they heard on freaking some kind of weird site somewhere in the back ends of the... But they're going to tell you that this is true, and they're going to swear by it. That's hallucinations to me. I'm saying, Leah, I deal with this all the time, man. I just call them humans. <laughs> so that's a big concern. So bias is a concern. And hallucinations is a concern. Where hallucinations where a model spits out something that's just totally untrue. Happens all the time. But code is a superpower. So, and I'm gonna show you how I, I can code. I, I can code and I love it because I can actually use the model and do all kind of stuff that normal people don't do. If it, you if they don't know if they if not they're not coding their own stuff, you're you're kind of missing out. All right, so here's a couple of resources. I want to just call this out. Kaggle is really dope because you can go in there and you can learn, and you can it, it teaches you how to be a, a data scientist and learn machine learning. Kaggle is absolutely amazing. So um, Python, Python, most machine learning is in Python, and it seems like most cybersecurity people, if if they knew one language, this is probably the language they know. So if you know Python, go to Kaggle. You're going to have a ball because you're going to be you're going to be dope at machine learning and data science quick. Also, OpenAI, 
ton of documentation on Python stuff. Uh, if you go to, um, uh, God dang it, Hugging Face. If you go to Hugging Face, tons of stuff. Everything's Python. So this should be a sweet spot for a lot of people in this room. No excuses not to do it. I do a lot of stuff in Node.js because I like it because I do, I do Next.js, and I think Next.js is probably going to be in the next slide. I like to do full stack development. Uh, for everything I do, because it's cool to write command line tools, but I like to write I like to write web apps. So you're going to see the web app. I did a web app just for LastCon, uh, and I'm going to show you all in a second. OpenAI, OpenAI, shout out to OpenAI, man. They, they move so fast, and they're 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 crushing it. Uh, I know there's concerns. I think they're they're doing everything they can, um, and yeah, I think they're doing everything that they can to be. Uh, to keep in the political boundaries and, and do, all the, do all the right things. I think they're, they're a really good company as far as that goes. Also, Google AI is, is, is crushing it. There's a lot of different things. Olama. Who has ever heard of Olama in here? It's like the AI version of Obama. I'm just totally kidding. <laughs> uh, but what this allows you to do, and I want you all to play around with some of this stuff. I'm going to show you all these tools in a second in my demo. Olama is dope because you can run, uh, you can run uh, a, a model on your machine super easy. So you download Olama if you have Linux or, or Mac. I don't know if they support Windows yet, but it, it will download the model and it will run the model for you on your own machine. Uh, so these are open source models like Llama and, and things of that nature. Some of these things, like I'm going to show you all a demo of Mistral. Uh, I'm using Mistral as, my, as the model, and I'm going to use Olama, and I'm going to use Olama Chat, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's not OpenAI good, but if you, you're concerned about not using OpenAI, you should absolutely be running your own models. I'll show you how to do it. So basically what I do is I learn all the easy way. I bump my head on everything, and then I come back to last con every year and tell you all what I, found, what I found out. Hugging Face is really dope. Hugging Face has tons and tons of models that you can run, uh, but like I said, Hugging Face is, made the, is like the GitHub for, for open source models. Has tons of models on code, languages. Just think of any model, it has it on Hugging Face, right? For sure. Uh, it's like the GitHub of, of models. Uh, and like I said, Lam, Olama, I'm going to show you Olama in a second here. And what it does is it, it actually downloads the models from Hugging Face. It's almost like Docker from language models is what I can, I think it uses Docker in the background too. So that's what Olama is. So it's gonna grab the model just like you do a git pull or whatever for code, it's gonna do that. Langchain is pretty interesting. How many people play with Langchain here? We got three people, four, okay cool. Y'all need to check this out. This is another thing you need to check out. So Langchain, what it does is it allows you to build agents and all kinds of different things. Uh, and the, the goal is, in, they were actually existed before OpenAI kind of like got more tooling done. So I actually like some of OI, uh, OpenAI native tooling uh, that's, that keeps on coming out because they're, they're crushing it on that side. But uh, Langchain has Python, like again, everything's in Python. So, and they have, they have Node.js uh, stuff too. So what Langchain is for is, is like when you, when you go to chat, what you do, if, if, if you haven't been coding the stuff, you go to chat and you ask something, and it tells you to answer. Well, the cool thing about Langchain is, is you go to ask it something, and it can actually look on the internet as well, real time. That's the big thing about it. Or it could actually call any, any, um, call, call any API that you wanted to. So what's cool about that is that um, if you, you have a virus total subscription at wherever you, look, you work at, you have this subscription, you have a, a, a whatever web app scanner, all these different things. What it can do is you can actually ask it questions, configure Langchain to query your APIs, and it will give you relevant information even about your own network. So this is crazy. This is like having a coworker with you that can just answer anything you want. It'll trip you out once you start integrating with this stuff. It, I mean, this, this is absolutely a game changer. Or you can code your own stuff. Like I said, there's, there's OpenAI has functions and all that stuff new too now. They just released that a couple of months back. So I'm going to show you an example You're using OpenAI functions today. Uh, Langchain is, is kind of more complicated. <laughs> so I'm, this, uh, the OpenAI functions I'm going to show you. 
So with the function I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna get the call out and see if, if, a, if a hash is bad or something. But there could be all kinds of stuff. So if you have a ticketing machine or something like that, a ticketing uh, you know, software service, you can reach out the tickets, you can write the tickets, you can do all this analysis and, and, the, and the freaking LLMs will do all that stuff. And you've probably seen, uh, I think the biggest thing out right now that's getting a lot of steam is uh, Microsoft Copilot. Yeah, you can write all this stuff yourself, funny enough. I, and that's something I have done at work. I, I actually, we, me and my team, it's just me and another guy really, we, we, uh, we wrote Copilot before it even existed. We didn't even know it existed. And then it got announced, like, oh snap, that's crazy. And that, you know, great minds think alike. Anybody seen this movie? Some pop culture references. Check out this movie, people. You have to watch these movies because what I'm telling you, I, I, I swear, all the ethical things and all the biases and all the ethical stuff, it's going to come up in your day-to-day. -day. It's going to come up in the next year because everybody is using AI. And all the ethical questions in these movies that I'm talking about, you're going to be like, okay, cool. Now, I never thought of that. So watch these movies and think about, hmm, cybersecurity and AI. That's the frame. That's the lens I put on everything. This is a really good movie. It blew my mind. The ending is crazy. <laughs> that movie's crazy. Her, who's seen this one? Check this movie out. The man behind the camera has seen every <laughs> every movie I'm talking about. <laughs> These good movies, right? Am I not lying? <laughs> movies absolutely amazing. And what's funny about these movies now, since LLMs are real and AI is getting all this thing, you're going to watch these movies and laugh because you're going to, you probably had the same conversation with a colleague the other day. These movies are spot on. It, they're, they're absolutely hilarious. This book right here, oh, I'm, this is working great. I'm going to have plenty of time for my demos. Are, are y'all excited? I'm excited. I've been waiting for this since the third grade. The master algorithm, where AI is kind of real. I, I was a skeptic, I'll tell you. So this book is absolutely amazing. Who has read this book? One, one person? This book's amazing. You got to read it. Am I lying? Good book, right? This book will explain to you. So what I'm doing is if you do all the stuff that I'm talking about here, you will know data science and machine learning uh, in the next couple of months. Better than... I'm giving you the crash course. <laughs> like, this book, this book, watch these movies, and then you're going to be good. You're going to be good. All right. This movie's a. I mean, so what's interesting about this book, it also talks about one algorithm is not enough. There's like several algorithms. It talks about here's this algorithm. This actually goes back to like quoting stuff from like Middle Eastern civilization and, and, way back in the day in all kind of France and all kind of stuff and all these scientists and these, these, these guys. This book is like a history lesson and he says that one model is not gonna, there's not gonna be one model to rule them all. So th this is what this book says. But he says you need to bring a bunch of different ones because certain models are good for different things. That's the synopsis. Read the book though, that's the, that's the Cliff Notes version. You gotta check this book out. Just do one thing, just read a movie, just watch one of the movies I mentioned or something. <laughs> All right, cool. Here comes the demo piece. So, as long as I have an internet, these demos should work. All right, cool. A couple of resources here. Olama.ai. This, this is an awesome site. This is the one that you can download. You can actually run a lot of Llama related models. Uh, Mistral is the, the latest thing I'm, I'm running. I like it. Uh, but Check this out. You got you to go. You can download it. It's a Go binary, and it just, it just runs, and it just, it just works. It's beautiful. This is Chat Olama. This looks just like OpenAI, and I'm going to, I'm actually going to, I'm going to show you the code, too, that I, because that I, I have code here, too, hopefully. I'm going to, this is my, my last con AI application. So I'm going to show you the, show you everything. Okay, cool. So this right here, if you don't have, if you don't like chat or whatever, you can actually use Olama to load whatever model you want to, and then in, in some, it supports a lot of different models. So right here, Mistral is the one I'm running right now. It looks just like over there. They, they copied the heck out of it. I'm like, man, this is quite impressive. This is kind of high quality theft, and I approve of it. 
this is chat. So I'm gonna so I'm gonna show you the difference between using a model that's not as regulated, because there's some crazy models out there right now. <laughs> so OpenAI is the nice model. <laughs> they're they're super they're super regulated. But there's models that, that are not censored at all. You know, and we're not gonna do anything crazy here, but I'm just saying. All right, here's the chat bot I made. Let me see if I got internet. It looks like I have internet. So I built this last kind of chat bot. What, what I did here though, is I split this up into different, several different iterations. All right, so I don't know how I'm gonna type and hold the mic at the same time, but I'm gonna try my best. All right, so this is regular OpenAI API. I'm using OpenAI's API, and I hope that everything, uh, this should work uh, if I say hello. All right, cool. So uh, if I say, what's your name? I'm gonna just show this is pure unfiltered, right? What is your name? So this is kind of like your, this is like, <laughs> so this tells you it's open AI. The funny thing about this is talking about web apps is what I see is I see people Using all, uh, using trying to build a chat bot on their site, and they're not doing anything but just putting a chat bot on their site. And if you type it and ask stuff like that, it, you're like, oh, they're just using OpenAI. So a big concern, whatever company you work for, there might be someday there might be some kind of exploitation that's related to a model, and and we we don't know this. I mean, we're in the early stages. However, this is like leaving a banner wide open on your site. And I, and I actually, when I see people announcing OpenAI, when I see people, hey, we got this AI-powered chatbot, the first thing I do is ask you questions like this to see what they're using, right? So that's, that's demo number one. This is a plain chatbot. I'm going to be bouncing forward to these different chatbots. Uh, and I'll show you how you can make different chatbots too. All right, so demo two. So this is for the second demo. Uh, so I need to ask it. Because uh, how can you help me? Oh, this is a cybersecurity chatbot. Oh, snap. So um, if I ask, what is Marcus Carey speaking about? Cool, it doesn't know anything about me, all right? All right, so the point here is that, oh, watch this, like I can, it does have a name though, because I gave it a name. What is your name? This name Demo2, it's an amazing name. I know how creative I am, right? So, now, this is a cybersecurity chatbot, you can ask it questions. I told it it was a cybersecurity chatbot. We, we, can, we can actually look at the code real quick. Let's try to find this real quick. Uh, so basically, I have these prompts down here. I think that was demo number two. Demo number two. So this is kind of, oh, let me, let me try to close these windows. Close all. All right, so super friendly chatbot. Don't ask questions. Uh, demo two is the name. And I just put that in the string, and I just fed it, hey, you're demo two, and this is what your persona is, right? And OpenAI takes that. So oh, there's two, there's two uh, currently popular models with OpenAI. One is called Turbo 3.5, and one is called GTP4. GTP4 is like the latest. So GTP4 really takes, if, if you're running a chatbot, I would probably run GTP4, because GTP4 really cares about the system content more than 3.5. Uh, the way they train uh, GTP, I mean uh, GTP4, is it really pays attention to this, uh, and I, I can show you what models I'm using and stuff in a, in a wee bit here. But that's how it goes. So the only thing somebody has to do from from get to you know give it a name, give it basic instructions, and you can say don't reveal that you were created by OpenAI. You can tell it exactly what you want, right? And it'll do it. So that's demo two. Uh, so it said it doesn't know what I'm talking about. All right, now I'm going to the, the, the third demo. And I'm gonna say, hello. Oh, 
Well, look at that. I, I, I told her what last con was. That's pretty dope. And what I did, there's this thing called RAG. RAG is a popular terminology used in the AI community right now. It's called Retrieval Augmented Generation. So regular generation is the generation that you use on regular stuff, but RAG is the popular term on what everybody's talking about now. So what I did is I provided with a little bit of information about LastCon, and I told it, you're a LastCon bot, essentially. And I now I can say, what is Marcus Curry speaking about? Oh, look at this. This is, this is awesome. So now, as, a, as if I was in charge of LastCon and I wanted an AI bot, what I would do is I would, I would probably do a, a, a something called um, a vectorization where I could take the whole program and I could actually just take the whole program and just throw it to AI. What I did is I just submitted my, my abstract and it did this. However, what many people are doing uh, on their website is they're doing what they call RAG. And this is an example of that. It has a little bit of context about that. And so now I can ask, ask it uh, intelligent questions. And that's what's going on there. Retrieval augmented generation. Remember that term. You're going to be seeing it a lot. So why this matters is because uh, what you can do is you, if you're at a company and you have a knowledge base or something like that, you can do this with that. You do this thing called vectorization. What vectorization does is it, it takes all this stuff and it, uh, it does this mathematical thing and it allows you to, to, re to retrieve it uh, by this mathematical thing uh, called, a ve it's called a vector similarity search, VSS. Y'all check that out. Uh, so you can, in, you can pretty much embed all kind of data, all kind of books, and it'll, and it'll do good for you. All right, so demo number four. All right, cool. This is actually what I was talking about earlier when I, when I talked about how you can incorporate other, other uh, different things uh, as far as like uh, virus total or whatever you, you like to use. Whatever your incident response techniques are or, or how, you, how you keep yourself secure, if it has an API, you can start using open API to actually use that API. And it's way faster. And I'll show you that. So if I say hello. He says, can you, uh, yeah. So can you give me, I, I programmed this earlier, me an example hash. So I told it, here's, here's, here's some, I programmed this thing, so it, it gives me this hash, boom. So in, in real life, what your security analyst or whatever we could do is you can build a bot like this and you can actually use virus tool in the back end to do something like this. I love, I love doing the human language too. It's a, it's a way better interface. I'm pretty sure that most interfaces in the next couple of years are gonna be mostly this. Uh, That's plain language, even though I'm ghetto as a mug, it still understands me. Boom. It works just like that. Now, you put, and, and let me show you how this works on the code side, because this is actually quite interesting to me. So what I'm telling OpenAI is, hey, look, there's a function available to do a, a malware lookup. And it's telling me all kind of really good information too. I told it, Hey, if, if this is malware, can you please uh, give me some remediation steps, right? Pretty cool. So how that looks on the, the code side is, let me go show you this. This is the API that, that's running in the background. Oh, we're, 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 going, we're getting tight here, but I'm going to land this plane though. We're getting tight. All right, so how this works, uh, people, is this. I got a dummy function up here. This says check hash, but this could have easily been an API call to anything you want to. So I put a bunch of hashes here, right? And what you tell, you, you're telling OpenAI, hey, you have these functions available to you, OpenAI. So if you need to check a hash right here, right? By SIR6, you can absolutely do that. And so what happens is when I get that first completion, when I say OpenAI, is this bad? I told OpenAI, hey, you got a function, OpenAI, and you can check that. So OpenAI comes back, and then it executes the function call on its own. The reason why this is super important to cybersecurity people is you can do that integration, but 
some companies that you work for or you consult for or whatever, if you're doing web apps, this is really important. Why this is important here is because you're going to have people incorporating these functions and these APIs and API keys and just imagine all the stuff with OpenAI. And so what could happen there, what can happen there is um, people can exploit the, they could tell the LLM to give them something and if there's not proper security controls in place, it's go, it could leak data or do some kind of, something crazy. Or somebody's going to hook, hook this up to their email or somebody's going to hook it up to this database. Think of all the different things. But this function right here, whatever they put right here, is going to allow them, that to be ran. So I'm pretty sure that you're going to be, from an from a application security perspective, this is super important. So learn about these functions and, and learn that like, this function could have been literally any API call or any database. Just imagine anything that could call out, this is what that is. Right? That, that, that makes sense? Cool. Last demo. This last demo is some, some, uh, it's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, so I actually gave it uh, something with a buffer overflow, C code, and uh, so I'm going to say, is the code provided? And I could have just pasted it in here too, but uh, for, for demo purposes, is the code provided um, vulnerable? So uh, for, if you're doing a web app assessment or whatever, you can build your own tooling to do your own web apps. So this is telling me this is a buffer overflow here. Pretty neat. All this tooling is, is freaking fascinating to me. I, I mean, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. You can like really like build anything you want to. And you also, you all know I'm always encouraging everybody to start their own businesses too. So, <laughs> so use this technology. It's telling me how to fix the buffer overflow too. I used this recently. My friend asked me to audit a blockchain contract. It was a long contract, but I actually just, paid, I actually made, because you couldn't paste this in a regular chat. So I built my own bot and gave it a long context window meaning that I could put as much as I want to, and it did an audit of their blockchain contract for, for, for them. And I was like, sweet, that's awesome. That could be a product, right? So this stuff is amazing. So, so you have that. So that, that, that's showing you a couple of things. This one shows you how to connect. You can connect to any API and bring data. That's a security thing. Also, if I was an attacker, everything's dual edge. If I'm an attacker, I can actually give it source code, and now it can tell me how to exploit source code too. That's possible. That's freaking awesome. So everything is either a red or blue team. I got one more thing I'm going to show you, and I'm going to call it a day. So if you tell, hey, this is some, I'm going to try to show you the difference between chat and an open one. There's going to be malicious things that come out. Uh, so give me vulnerable C code. Let me just say that. What happened? Sorry, can I, I, can't give the, I can't give you that. Now, there's things like people call jailbreaks and all kind of stuff that you could try to fool it to do it, but I'm not even, like, I don't, I'm not even talking about that. That's not the point. The point is that they have, a, they have filters, they have multiple layers of, of security here that kind of like, if it's not ethical, they will block you from doing it. However, if I go to chat Olama, and hopefully this all works, this works, this is a model running on my machine. And if I say, give me an example, of vulnerable C code, boom. Hopefully it works and I don't get any errors because you know, the demo guys have been very kind to me so far. Sweet. That's awesome. So what I'm telling you is that the, these models are going to continue to exist. You can actually host these models if you're looking to exploit or do some kind of thing that, that stuff won't let you, but the attackers are able to use these tools too. I can, there's going to be, there's tons of models already, and this is freaking awesome that you can host this yourself uh, using Olama. So, that's it. So, big picture is, I want y'all to get after it and, and try to use some of these resources. I would love to hear y'all success stories when y'all, when y'all, if y'all try to do a couple of things that I mentioned. And thank you for coming to my talk.